Hey, my name is Kenny Johnston. I'm the director of product covering our ops section. That's the verify, package, release, configure, and monitor stages here at GitLab. Um, I'm going to be doing a walkthrough this morning. Um, and I was thinking about what kind of walkthrough I should do. And um, I'll give some verbalization to it, but I'm also going to spend the time creating my walkthrough issue template. So um, I have an existing project that, let me share my screen, that I created as part of um, a Udemy course about GitLab CI that I recently took. And um, this is a static website. It uses the Gatsby uh, um, content creation framework. I uh, have an existing GitLab CI YAML file. I thought what I would try to do is, this is kind of progressively deploying. Anytime I have a, a merge to master, it immediately deploys a new version of the site. I was thinking about switching that to a kind of more release bound where every time I cut a tag, it deploys a new version of the site. Um, and so that will involve me changing some of my YAML file. And then I thought I'd also spend some time setting up the milestone to release a connection so that I could bundle up a bunch of issues and their corresponding merge requests and then have those be um, kind of create a, a release artifact as a result of having a new tag. Um, natively here in GitLab. So I'm going to stop sharing. Actually, um, so yeah, that was what I'll, I plan to do. Actually, I'll go back to sharing and I can um, create this walkthrough issue real quick. Here, so let me go back. Uh, in the new product issue, I've got a walkthrough template. Uh, Description. Um, my expectation is that I'll follow the docs for how to adjust my CI jobs to only run on tags. Um, and then follow the docs for creating um, milestones and releases that are connected together, creating a number of MRs and issues for a milestone, and then um, bundling those into a tag and release. Okay. Uh, so I need, a, don't have a YouTube video, I need a Google Docs. So this will be my this will be my walkthrough for notes. Uh, I'm gonna create this issue. This link in here. Task pre walkthrough. I'm not creating a calendar invite. I did create a Google Doc, did update that during the walkthrough. I am recording the video and I verbalized and then capture notes. Send that to me. This is my section of ops. Okay. Got my issue. I'm recording this video. I've got my Google Doc. Here's my issue link put in here. Okay, all right, now I'm set. So then let me, so I'm just gonna share my whole screen here. Let me fix that. I have a couple of windows open here. Okay, so move this window over here. Okay, so I'm gonna Google. So I know from having seen this YAML config reference before that there was information about running on only uh, certain actions. So I've seen before that I could run it on tags. <laughs> So 
So that is tags for such like labels. Not that. Okay, only except I can run things only when the git reference is a pipeline tag. Okay, so let's look at my CI YAML file over here. Um, so I have various stages including test, build test, um, review, I have this deploy template for deploying review apps, staging, and production, and then a set of production tests. And so basically the deploy staging I want to happen on every merge request, but the deploy production I only want to happen on tags. So these are where I would add only tags. Uh, so like production test, that wouldn't be master anymore. Is there anything in this? Yeah, so these deploy template is only running on master. I wonder how these interact. Let's give it a shot. Okay, um, I'm actually gonna do this in VS Code. Um, actually, I've got the display thing messed up at the moment. My bar in the wrong place, there we go, okay. Um, okay so this is my project. Let's try this. I'm going to still use this same template. What I'm going to do is not, the review app's gonna go on merge requests. Staging, staging I do want on master. Wonder if I need this to, Let's just try. So I'll add only here. Only on tags. And production tests are only going to be on tags. I don't know. Maybe I just had that duplicated. Let's try, okay. Oops, huh, I was not on master. Okay. Well, that's strange. Oh, did I prevent code? Oh, master is a protected branch. Hmm. 
Let's do it a different way then. Try this again. Something is a little bit messed up on my I'm going to pause for a second so I can figure this out. No upstream configured. Oops, I just paused the share. So if you're uh, not watching along, so I paused the share, but my problem was that I had had a, uh, had not chosen an origin because I have two origins and new and an old for some reason on my, um, on this, in this Git repository locally. 
so I hadn't chosen one, so it was giving me an error when creating that branch. But uh, I did successfully create the branch and the merge request for adding these production to only run the production job on tags. I do probably need to wait for these jobs to run in order to see whether or not that was successful. Just one thing I could do. Um, I'm trying to think if there's something I could do to test it a little bit. I could try to create that uh, because it's not merged yet. I think I could try to create a tag, but that won't work because it, this uh, code change hasn't merged yet. So I will actually pause the recording this time and um, come back when this job is finished running. Okay, so that this just merged. So now we see a post merge pipeline. And it does not have production. It does have production tests. So that's something I need to figure out. But it does deploy to staging. So that's what we wanted. We just need to remove this production test. So one more fix to that file. You want production tests to only run on uh, tag. So let me. Um, pull the latest master should have that new change for does not have that new change. No, because I had this file open. Okay, so production has only tags. This should production test should also be only on tags. Okay. Okay, so, but since we have it merged for running on tags, everything keeps getting away, um, we should be able to add a new tag and confirm that a pipeline gets created for that deployed to production job. I call this 1.0 of our master website from don't have any release notes. Okay, so I have a tag and it release notes. I can browse the files. Okay, that's the repository for my tag. I can browse any commits. Okay, so this is my first tag. So it's all the commits I've ever made to this repository. Makes sense. I can download our zip of all the content. Okay, so I wanted to check to make sure a pipeline was kicked off as a result and see what was in that pipeline. Um, let's see. It, it, yeah, is this my, it's nothing that tells me that this was kicked off from a tag, one job for 1.0. I guess that tells me that this was uh, a job created for this tag. Oh, and deploy failed.
No, I had not. Uh, I have to run those other jobs first. Okay, so let's go back here. There are other jobs, like the build job, that are required to do a deployed reduction. Oops. Um, Okay, so this creates an artifact with this public path. I think that's the only thing that's needed. I need to test, I need to do the reviews. Yeah. It's this path that's needed for search to deploy it. So. I think I did need that build job on tags. Okay, let's try that. I think it's just that one. Is there anything about cache? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna set both of those to merge and then we'll try it again. So I'm gonna pause the recording so those both finish. Okay, just a quick check in. This is the MR for removing the, um, uh, adding, sorry, what was I doing here? <laughs> oh yeah, removing the production tests from master and instead only running them on tags since that's when we're doing production deploys. So that merged and then we're gonna look at this pipeline and see if the pipeline actually does now not have. So yeah, this is the merged to master, merged to master pipeline and it only deploys the staging does no longer has production tests. So that was successful. I'm gonna pause again while we wait for this other job about um, adding the build job to um, tag pipelines, which will allow us to complete that deploy to production on a tag. Uh, let me pause for the recording again until that pipeline is finished. Okay, while we, I'm still waiting for that pipeline to finish, but while I'm doing that, I wanted to show a little UX bug. So this arrow carrot, I think, is implying that there is other content over there but the content is now like, um, I can't remember the term for it, but it is reactive to my page resize and, and appropriately moving where it should. This content's getting cut off. So maybe the arrow is meant to remind me that I can scroll this way, but I would have thought the arrow was gonna give me some new content over here, but it's just non-reactive. Non um, the other thing I noticed is that this kind of always stays like that. I don't know what, why that carrot is staying there. Um, but I had made a comment in my notes earlier that like uh, it was difficult for me to tell what kicked off a pipeline. And it might be nice instead of seeing the triggerer uh, to have what triggered it. I noticed that we have these um, tabs up at the top that can give me like only show me the pipelines from branches and only show me the pipelines from tags. So that helps me figure out, hey, here's where I should go if I'm looking for my um, tag pipeline and they have this little tag thing next to them, which is different. And this has a little um, master deploy 
as opposed to these other ones have other um, like master versus merge requests. So that I think is actually the thing that helps you distinguish it. But it was hard for me to visually understand that quickly. Um, uh, we're still running this job. I'm not going to stop the recording and I'll just go back and watch it complete. Um, so the review app is deploying and then it will merge. We'll give a brief overview of this project while we wait for that. Um, okay, so this is a static website. Um, if you're familiar with, there's a great GitLab CICD Udemy course that I took. Um, let me, I can't remember the URL for this site. I should probably put that in the readme somewhere. This was the site. Okay. So that's the site that is our production site. And then it also has a staging domain. So we should be able to see various different updates in staging versus of stuff that's merged to master versus stuff that's not tagged um, when stuff is when um, when the repo is tagged then a new tag will uh, update the production site with any commits that have happened since the last tag um, and those would be there will be points in time where production and staging differ because uh, we have not tagged the site Okay, so this has got to be done now. Okay, so that's merged now. The dust. We'll go back and add another tag. Um, actually, yeah, let's just add a tag just to set, uh, confirm that the pipeline looks correct. So we had a 1.0 tag. Let's do a 1.1 tag. It's from master. Second tag. Release notes. No. I don't think there have been any new commits content at least. Let's see if I look at the commits, browse commits. Huh. I was expecting that this would only show me the delta between my previous tag and my next tag. Out of that. Okay, and so I have this second tag, and we want to look at the pipeline for that. Pipeline's running. Oh no, that's not the right pipeline. Let's look at this pipelines again. And I, there was a way for me to see only ones running on tags. That's this one. Let's get. Three, oh yeah, that's right, three jobs. I was only expecting two and I forgot I added the test. Okay, so it's got build, deploy to production, and then do production tests on tag. Those are the three jobs I wanted. Hopefully production deploy will work now that I have the build in front of it. And then we'll see the, the results of the test. So um, I can't remember how long this build takes. I'm gonna pause again while I wait for the build. We can see if the production deploy is successful. Okay, I'm back with another uh, call it product critique. Um, every time I come to pipelines, I'm just now recognizing this. Every time I click on pipelines, it gives me it starts me off with all. I don't know if I really care about all, and I can imagine in projects with thousands of pipelines, I guess it's paginated, so maybe it doesn't take too long to load. But I think most of the time I'm coming here, I'm really just interested in what's running. I came here to look at pipelines because I want to know what pipelines are running. And then maybe secondarily, I might want to look at all to see some finished ones, but um, I'm going to write uh, 
Yeah, so we'll see. Um, okay, so those are my running ones. This is the master deploy that's deploying to staging, and this is the uh, tag that's deploying to production. Production deploy is running, so let's just watch and see if it doesn't error. Uh, this message is a little downloading artifacts from coordinator. I really don't know what coordinator is. That might be a I'm pointing that out because I'm it because it's a generic message about artifact download. It's telling me that it's got to be like a, a GitLab written message. Sometimes the what you're seeing in these pipeline most of the time what you're seeing in these pipeline logs are, um, this one is where I was, are like the result of shell script execution that was part of the pipeline or part of the job definition. But this downloading artifacts uh, section has got to be coming from GitLab itself. So, um, okay, that succeeded. That was great. So we've got, there's no new content here. Um, I think I'm all set up. Let's go back. So just a reminder, what we did was we started with a um, a pipeline that was uh, pushing to production on every merge to master. And we've adjusted that to now only push to production on merges uh, on tags. So we can have multiple merges to master that will automatically deploy to staging. And then if we want to deploy to um, master, we do a tag and kind of like a release. So the next thing I wanted to do um, was create uh, the milestone to release mapping. So I have a couple of issues in a milestone, create merge requests for them, then bundle that into a release and tag it and see what kind of artifacts are created through the release process. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up my handy dandy GitLab doc site. Uh, so there's an API. I'll well, look at this releases documentation. It's still will to create a Git tag at the moment of a release to introduce a checkpoint in your source code history. But in most cases, your users will need compiled objects. GitLab's releases are a way to track deliverables in your project. They're a snapshot in time. You can use semantic versioning. We write a release description. It comes with assets and source code. You can get permalinks to them. I want to associate a release with a milestone. Releases can optionally be associated with one or more project milestones by including a milestone array in your request to the releases API. Uh, okay, so I'm going to need to use the API to do that. That might take me a minute to configure. About milestone with no releases, one release, and two releases. Huh. So how do I? I want to create a release without creating a tag, and have it attached to an active milestone. Wonder how I do that. Let me read about this. So what I'm, I guess, uninformed about <laughs> is how would I, when I create a tag, it automatically like takes a, 
it, the tag is a snapshot in the repository based on current master typically. And I'm wondering what I should do if I want that, if I want to do that post facto. I want to release with no tag and then tag a release at some later date. So maybe let's just try this. If I go to releases, um, I have some releases that were created from tags. So maybe, maybe the logic is every time you create a tag, it creates a release and every, but you can create a release without a tag. So let's see if that's true. So I'm going to create a release, create from master. I don't want to create it from anything at the moment. Maybe I'm just not familiar enough with tagging. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cheat a little bit. I don't know if it's cheating. I didn't really see this as an example in our docs, but I'm going to go to a GitLab project, see what they do. So we have various tags. We don't have a tag available for huh. So I can understand why you would create a release at time of tag when you're doing when you don't have a milestone attached to that tag. What I'm confused by is these examples where we show a version with a tag, but it shows percent complete. So who's percent complete would imply to me that this was happening mid milestone. So this blows an example of a milestone with no releases, one release and two releases. So if I'm I have two releases associated with a milestone. Um, let's go back to cheating and look at GitLab. We have milestones here. Do they have releases associated with them? Oh, that's weird. We don't have milestones. That is confusing me. I know we have milestones. Oops, I meant issues. Like this one has a 1210 milestone. Where is that thing? Oh, it's a group based milestone. Sorry, not familiar exactly with how milestones work. So the group level, there are milestones. These milestones include an active one, like 1210. Does this one have associated releases? Let's see.
doesn't show any associated release. So maybe these re releases are things you do. The connection to releases you do is post facto. And those examples were just a little bit confusing because they were showing examples where there was still these are the examples where there is a tagged release, but like no burn down. So you wouldn't expect there to be open issues in a and no merged issues in a milestone tagged to a release. Because the release happens at the end of the milestone. I think that's maybe what's confusing me. And this like percent complete, I'm not even sure why we would show that. Um, let's go ahead, I don't know. Well. Why show percent of milestone in release page? Okay, so I'll need to follow up on that. But let's go back. I don't need to create a new tag. What I need to create is a new milestone. And I'm going to create some issues in that milestone. And then um, so new milestone is for my 1.2 1.2 um, improvements. I'm going to add a uh, start date. OK. And now I have a milestone. Let's create some issues. Uh, welcome to my issue board. Sure. OK. So I want to create some issues. One issue is update the title. Um, and another issue is, let's look at the site. Here's the staging site. Um, where was I? OK, uh, so update the title, and we'll add family to friends. OK, so this issue I'm going to associate with my milestone. This issue I'm going to associate with my milestone. OK, I've got them here. I'm going to move them to to do. Open them both up. Start merge requests. Open the web IDE. So this was add family. That is in that source. Pages, index, hi friends, yeah, I'm family. I'll save that. It's in edit mode. Go to commit mode. Yep, I got that one. One file. Staged. Commit it. It already created a branch for me. That's great. Okay, that one's done. Go back to the merge request. Pipeline's running. Got my changes. I added friends and family. That does what I wanted it to do. Okay, I can resolve the whip because it's not ready to go. Refresh my page. Okay. Uh, I've got this other one, update the title. I'm going to open my web ID. Already in edit mode. Go to my index page. What was I supposed to be doing here? Update the title. Uh, the title is, was my friend's family. This is the best title. Let's say this is uh, by far the best title. Okay, 
go to commit. I've got my changes staged. I'm going to commit that. Update the title. It already created me a branch. I'm going to just commit to that branch. And I can go back and look at my merge request. And again, let's make sure that's changes right. It's by far the best. Yep, that's what I was looking for. Got a pipeline. I'm going to resolve the whip and set to, yeah, sure, that's what I want to do. I want to merge them. So I want to see both the merge request pipeline run, which would create a review app. And then I want the, the merged to master pipeline and hopefully that deploys to staging. And then I can check out my staging ones before I tag my release and that will push a production deploy. So I'm going to pause while I wait for those pipelines to run. Just go over to my pipelines pages while we wait. So that was my master deploy. I've got two others running. These are on a merge request each. Um, let's look at my board. These were in to do. They've actually moved from to do to doing to some sort of waiting stage. Um, it would have been cool if they had MRs on them for them to automatically move. Um, no, nope, I'm cutting off here. Yeah. See my board. I'm going to close this closed thing. Okay, so waiting on these pipelines, I'm going to pause the recording again. All right, again, found something to comment on while I'm waiting. So this is, um, I was on the milestone page. This page has a burn down chart, which is only a dot because it's uh, not a lot of time going on in this window and I don't have issues moving through the process, but it did show me um, merge requests in this uh, milestone based view. And it tells me that there are two created for um, this work that they're open and unassigned. And it says that there's like a, there's a difference between them being open and unassigned and being open and assigned, that that kind of implies that they're waiting for merge. Um, I've already clicked the merge when pipeline succeeds, um, but it makes sense that we don't actually count that for anything. So what I'm gonna do is uh, assign myself to them. I could have done that, let me show you. You can do that from the board. And this one is assigned to me, that one's assigned to me. Close that little board pop out. Um, so now let's go look at that milestone again. What does it say? Doesn't really adjust my burn down. Open and assigned. I thought that if I made them open to an assign, assigned them, they would move to this, this column. They are open. Hmm. Maybe that's not working or maybe I'm just doing something wrong. Um, I would expect that it would, it would be useful to see these kind of like what merge requests are. And I like the, the d distinction between open and unassigned. Um, this work in progress might just be better to determine to use like, is it listed as WIP? And when it's not listed in WIP, then it's waiting for merge, whether or not it's assigned or not. Um, in this case, those MRs are not in WIP assigned, still open, their pipelines are running, but um, participants, Ooh, I didn't see that. So I'm a participant probably because I had an issue. That's pretty cool Let's see who's a participant in a milestone. Burn down chart, two open issues. So maybe what I'll do is uh, pause the pipeline on one of these, or at least remove the merge when pipeline succeeds. So that's how you jump back to the merge request. It's an automatic merge. So let's just wait for one pipeline to run and then I wanna see that should close the attached issue. So this one is not going to run. That is the add family and friends, but update the title should when this merges. So there's a, it's open. There's a active merge request for this issue. It's running the deploy, and I set it to 
uh, marginal pipeline succeeds. So um, not using the deploy app, but we can use the deploy on the other one. What I want to see is, does this automatically close that issue? And then what is that? How does that update my milestone progress? Okay, pipeline completed successfully. This says it's merged, closed the issue. Awesome. There's now a merged by who? That's weird. I'm not sure why that happened. I lost my snapshot. Can grab. Oh, is it this one is the merged one? Okay. That is weird. Um, okay. I updated this title, it closed the issue. That's right, I wanted to look at what's going on with the milestone as a result. One completed issue, one ongoing issue. It still says that it's in doing. No, it's, just, it's not a, it's a weird artifact of how we do labels. That's confusing though, we should, Think of some way. Confusing to see labels for doing completed issues, especially in a milestone burn down. Um, not really sure what the burn down look is supposed to be, but it still just says one up, it went from two to one. It didn't really show me anything about, <laughs> this is funny, total issues. I don't know what that means. 800 meters, 800 million. Um, Um, okay, sorry. Uh, this so this one should the pipeline should be completed. So I've got a review app. That's the cool thing. So I've got this uh, deployed to a review app. Um, no, but it didn't give me my review app link. Maybe I had not configured this appropriately. Deploy review definitely happened. I can stop the environment. It didn't give me the like, usually I get a direct view of the site here. Instead, I've got the environment. I can go look at the environment and then I can view the environment. Not, why can't I even view the direct environment? Maybe the URL is not passing correctly. This is my environment. Let's look at all my environments. I've got some review environments. This is one of them. I'm monitoring for it, but I don't have the jump to live site. So I must not be passing the um, review app URL correctly in that job. 
Thought it would give me the URL it deployed to. That just gives me the variable. Okay, now I gotta figure this out. One second. What was my pattern for my review apps? Build websites. It's my standard deploy. So domain and my domain CI environment slug. I don't even know what that. I don't know how I can figure that out. This job deployed it. This job doesn't give me a lot of info about where it deployed because it masks my masked my variable. It's had domain. I didn't see domain anywhere else in this. Ugh. Okay, I I'm not really sure how to troubleshoot that or how to pull up the. Let me just look at my docs page back here somewhere. I wonder if I configured this incorrectly originally. How review app works. I should have this little view app option. Set up a job. I use the predefined environment row. Commit app to create a dynamic environment. I did that. Enable the review apps button. When configuring rows for a project, you need to add a new job to get it, as mentioned above. Oh, am I not passing this? That's my problem. I don't have a URL for the review app. Is that right? That can't be right. No, I do have a URL. It's the this domain. Um, oh, the name is this. No, it's a bit ref name, not the environment slug. I don't know. I guess one way I can do to fix that later is to add a script that just echoes out the like deploying review app to URL blah. And then at least I'll have 
where that is. Okay, what I'm going to do is just ignore that for now. Bummer that I didn't get a review up. Part of my intent here was to showcase that I had uh, issues in multiple states. Uh, let's look at my pipelines again. So I no longer have any running pipelines. I have some finished pipelines for, I added the title and this was when it merged to master. And part of this was deploying to staging. So I updated the title, reminder, and I have a production website that has a title that says this is the best title. And I have a staging site that says this is by far the best title. Okay, so I've got one of my improvements in. I'm going to um, now I gotta rebase. Why is fast forward merge not possible? Okay, I can rebase this locally. What was my... My branch trainer was to add family to friends. Get all my branches again. Combine the two of these. Okay, so I've got by far the best and good. Okay, hopefully that rebase works. Yeah, I do want to keep that one. Okay. I'm gonna to have to run pipelines again. Now that I rebased. Uh, dang. Mess that up. Okay, so my intended changes. <laughs> uh, this is by far the best. I'm not doing a good job of paying attention. Okay, that's the only change I'm looking for. I've got it. I'm going to. Merge when pipeline succeeds. I'm gonna pause, come back when this pipeline has completed and the merge pipeline is run and we've got it in staging. Okay. Um, I 
I'm sharing my screen, right? Okay, yeah, I want to make sure I still share my screen. Um, so this has deployed, this was the add family to friends, it's merged. The issue that it was attached to is closed. The milestone shows that all of our issues are closed. Um, our issues are completed. That's great. Um, we have finished pipelines. Let me show you the one that recently finished. This was the master to update and deployed to staging. So remember, we we're adding family and friends. Production site still says this is the best title ever. Uh, this one says, hi, friends and family. This is by far the best title ever. OK. So we've got our two changes that we wanted in staging. They're sitting there. Now, I know that if I create a tag, I um, will cause a new deployer production, which is great. Um, let me see. I've got, let's just create a release and then see if we can associate the milestone with the release after we create it via the API. So the tag is V. The tags I might already have. It would be nice to know current semantic versioning or default to current semantic versioning. Um, okay, so I need to go to 1.2 because I've got 1.2 off of master. Includes updates to title titles. Let's just actually just call this. Okay, so I created that, shows up in my releases, but releases basically just created a tag for me. I think it did much more. Now if I look at my pipelines, I had pipelines up, but I can see that I should have a tag pipeline that is running from that second tag for 1.2 building, hopefully it deploys, and then I should be able to see that in production. Now, I was looking at how to associate a milestone with the release. You have to use the API. You need to call this update release API endpoint and put a new milestones. I need the title of the milestone. So I had Postman up. I was trying to configure this. It has an example. Okay. I'm just going to try to copy this. So put. URL is here to adjust that for my purposes. Uh, my release is actually release. So it's 1.2. My project number, how do I get my project number? Let's look at my general project product ID is right here. Uh, this is on gitlab.com. And I'm going to need to provide a private token. I'm going to do that off window. And I need to put a milestones in this, something like this. So back over here, milestones, 
something like that. And my milestone is specifically called B1.2. Now that's interesting. That's exactly the same one. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then I need a a header that has private token. And a value. Oops, I pasted that in there. I didn't mean to. Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> Is that. That's weird. Is that how Postman works? Okay, body, header, didn't want to actually put parameters. Okay, let me get my private token. this here, but then I will remove it before I publish this video. Let's see what happens. Parameters is empty. I want parameters to be empty. We have a header. I've got a URL. Why would it tell me that parameters shouldn't be empty? Hmm. Oh, did that do anything? That did milestones. Oh, I think it did add the milestone. Let's see if that's not sure what I changed. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's associated with the release. This stuff was all released after it was. This is the milestone attached to the release, shows the improvements. I want to close this milestone actually. And go back to my releases. So this shows me the milestone. Tells me there are two issues. If I look at the milestone, I can look at what specific issues were in that milestone. I was wondering if. Okay, so I think I'm in general still a little bit confused about how you would utilize this for upcoming releases, but I need to go ask some questions about how you set that up. I imagine you have to create the release via API with a future date, but then I don't know about how you do that without adding a, a tag. Um, but in conclusion, some improvements um, and some, some questions about how to use this specific capability about upcoming releases correctly, but showed an ability to add, um, create, to adjust a project from being continuous delivery to only deploying on, um, on tags, creating a milestone and a tag, creating a release and a tag and attaching a milestone to that to showcase what work was actually in it. Um, if I look at my tags, I again want to question whether or not my tag is going to have everything new when I look at, uh, it's going to show me commits that were the delta or just yeah, so that's all commits, not just the ones that were a part of, that were new from that, since that tag. Um, let me see if I guess I look at an older one, it won't show me the most recent ones. So that makes sense, but it's like a, the full tag, full commit history, not since the last tag, um, which I guess can make sense if you're not necessarily always doing sequential tagging. Um, and, what else? My releases page. Oh, I want to look at the main page. It shows that I have three releases, three tags. Jump straight into my releases. Okay, so um, I will create, I'll st stop the recording, I'll create issues and post this. Um, thanks, everybody. <laughs>